How's it going, you guys? Damocles here, and today I want to bring you guys some tips to make you better Pokemon Unite players and to help you climb up the ranked ladder. Uh, you guys have been asking for more tip videos, so that's what I'm bringing to you. So if you like this content or it helps you out in any way, please consider subscribing. It is totally free. Make sure you hit that like button and comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. If you want to talk to me directly, hop into my Discord, and if you want any dope Team Shiny merch, hit the merch line link in the description. But without further ado, let's hop into these tips. Um, some of these tips are super obvious, and other ones I see players, even at the highest levels of play, still not following them. So I think they will really help you out. Um, the first one being, you should be constantly pressuring in all of your games, okay? In every single game, you do not want to let the enemy team do anything for free. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to fight them, it just means you need to be constantly apply, applying pressure no matter what it is that you're doing. So if they're trying to go for a, uh, you know, what's considered a safe camp on their side of the map, pressure them. Like, push up on them, try and poke at it, try and do anything that's gonna make them feel uncomfortable or that could potentially, uh, you know, with low risk to you, provide you with some reward or benefit, like depriving them of experience or something like that always be pressuring and when i'm saying like uh you know you don't have to fight them it could be something as simple as like a jungler knowing how to use vision properly if you are in one particular lane for a long period of time then the enemy team if they're good on the opposite lane should recognize hey jungler's down bottom lane i don't have to go and uh you know play safe up here we know that it's a two on two or it could be a three on two so you want to be constantly pressuring. If you are, you know, playing jungle, that could mean hiding out in the jungle for a little bit so neither of the lanes can play safely. If it comes to objectives, it means, you know, trying to poke at it. Uh, even if your whole team isn't there, just trying to poke it down a little bit when the enemy team's trying to do it just to apply pressure. It just, it sets the tone for the entire game and it ends up getting you a large amount of benefits uh, when your pressuring actually uh, works. Um, tip number two, is farm 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 uh not just your camps but the enemy camps uh always try to go for contested camps first when you can uh, so that you are depriving the enemy team of experience uh it's really important to farm in this game and secure your level leads uh, but it's equally as important or even more important to deny xp from the enemy team especially if you are ahead uh, you know, like if I'm playing Venusaur and I'm in a kind of a pokey competition, comp, uh, composition, um, going and poking down the enemy uh, XP camps and stealing them puts them even farther behind and allows me to go back when I want to at my leisure to go and farm my own camps. And that stuff is not being touched by the enemy right now. You want to go and steal their camps so that they can't go and do the same thing to you. Make sense? Constantly, constantly, constantly be farming. And uh, this also kind of goes into my next point, which is uh, try to abuse cooldowns and unite move like power spikes whenever possible. Uh, so that means if you're jungling or if you're in lane, if you pop somebody's eject button, someone eject buttons, you know that sucker is down for like 80 seconds, 90 seconds, however long the cooldown is now. Go and abuse that you can go and apply extra pressure to them you know if they fight you they don't have that escape mechanism or they don't have that engage mechanism so you need to take advantage of that don't just don't just take that and uh let them sit with it and let them recover like go and abuse that go and fight them go and take uh camps in their jungle like if you are on discord or you're playing with friends or something like relay that information to everybody else so that they know if they're in a fight with that person that they're in an advantageous position and the same thing goes with unite moves if someone uses their unite move and you know yours is up or your whole team's is up and the enemy team you get them to waste theirs then you are in a much you're you're in a team fight automatic win situation and that applies to both end game like if you're able to go and uh, you know, just before Zapdos spawns, you're able to get into a fight where the enemy team has to expend Unite moves and your team doesn't. You just set your team up for success. Um, it, it also applies to other points in the game, like Dreadnought or what have you. And it also applies to not just like stealing enemy Unite moves and their cooldowns, but understanding when your team's Unite moves are up and when uh, your team has a Unite move advantage, say at Dreadnought. Like if it, it means uh, Charizard can go and uh, hit level like eight or nine and get 
its Unite move uh, right before Dreadnought and you getting that extra camp is not going to do anything for you, let your Charizard get the get the Unite move so that you can go and win an objective, you know? And you need to be constantly thinking about this stuff in your mind. Like, all right, like we just expended that Unite move. If I am fighting a Charizard, maybe I don't put as much weight into him using his Unite move because his Unite move comes off cooldown in like four seconds. Whereas, uh, you know, someone like a Cinderace or somebody like a Greninja, their Unite move has a longer cooldown or a longer charge rate. So if you are able to expend that, it's a lot more valuable and they don't have those mechanisms of stealing objectives or uh, winning team fights or providing their team with Buddy Barrier. So always, always, always try and keep that in mind. Um, another tip is, and this is something that you just need to learn it because so many people don't do this and it's learning to lose properly. Okay, and I don't mean losing the whole match. I mean learning to lose lane or jungle gracefully, okay? Or objectives. So like if you go, like the only thing worse, like people think like, oh man, losing Dreadnought, that's the worst thing that can happen early game, right? By the way, check out this one, this quad feed, by the way. Um, regardless, people think worst thing you can do is lose those Dreadnoughts, but that's not true. The worst thing you can do is lose those Dreadnoughts and then go and take a team fight anyway and lose four people plus the Dreadnought plus farm. That's the worst thing. And, you know, what's worse than the enemy team scoring like a quick 20 points for free at your, uh, you know, at your first goalpost, like really early in the game, uh, letting them score uh, 20 points for free plus getting two kills off of it. You need to learn how to lose gracefully, meaning if you are in a losing lane matchup, don't just go and bleed out all over the place. Keep it contained. Farm what you can. If you can stop them from scoring, great. But don't go and necessarily sacrifice your life and give over 7 kills in order to prevent 10 points from being scored. Because then you're just in a 10 times worse situation. Same thing goes for Dreadnought. Like you lose Dreadnought, or you're going to, you think you're going to lose Dreadnought. You're not in a position to fight Dreadnought. Try and steal it, try and poke them down, maybe try and get a kill or something, but don't commit to an all-out team fight if you're going to go and get wiped by five people and lose Dreadnought, because now you are behind massively in experience. You've given over five kills, and you've given over the best XP buff in the game, and they can probably go and take your camps if your whole team just got wiped. So you need to learn how to lose gracefully. This is something like when I'm teaching people how to play any MOBA, whether it's League of Legends, Smite, or whatever, like this is one of the first things that I explain to them because it's so, especially with newer players, they think, oh no, like I can't let them score. And they just throw themselves at the enemy team. And it's like, nah, son, like you, like you don't want the and part of it, all right? You gotta avoid the ands in this game. So we lost Dreadnought, period. Not we lost Dreadnought and we lost four kills, okay? Like, hey, we lost Rotom. That's fine. Defend Rotom. But don't lose Rotom and give up half your jungle farm, you know? We lose Ludicolo, okay? Don't give up Ludicolo and the Buffalant. Make sense? So, like, you gotta learn how to lose gracefully. I could do a whole video on that. Um, another thing, another tip is... Remember your win condition, okay? If you're playing, and it kind of goes into the other point as well, if you're playing a certain kind of keep the certain kind of team composition, recognize what your win condition is. Is my win condition like going and stealing this Zapdos? Are we are is our team exceptionally good at doing high burst damage and stealing objectives? Like, can we fight the enemy team in a five on five, or are we better off trying to poke them down? You need to remember the win condition. Remember, okay, the goal of this game is to try and keep up on experience and don't throw at Zapdos. That's literally it. Like, if you are ahead, like we are in this game, if we're massively ahead and stomping people, your win condition at that point is literally just don't let the enemy team get Zapdos. So, translation, don't go and start Zapdos so that they can steal it. Go and do everything to avoid their win condition and successfully accomplish your win condition. All right? 
And you need to recognize that even if your team doesn't recognize that. If you go and your entire team right now is pushing up and it would be really easy for you to go and score 32 points, but you know that if the enemy team comes back and scores 50 out of out of nowhere in the jungle and nobody's going back to defend it, sometimes you gotta just take that bullet. Maybe you miss MVP, but at the end of the day, you prevent your team from losing the game by 100 points. And so just remember your win conditions, guys. Remember your win conditions. Um, if that's not clear to you, then I can do a whole other video on it. But um, those are my general get better at Unite tips. Some of them might be obvious. Some of them might not be so obvious. But each one of those is like incredibly cru crucial, not just in Unite, but in any MOBA that you play or in any game that you play, honestly. So uh, please be sure if you have any suggestions or you have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments below. Consider subscribing because it's totally free. And uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Damocles out.